But no, I'm the successor of Shaw Effendi. How could you be a successor of Shaw Effendi because you're already told that you are hands of the cause? If you claim anything higher than that, then you don't believe in Shaw Effendi and his appointment of you. So there is a lot of a strategy and how these things works. Because the whole idea rotates, you know, it revolves around the fact of the unity of the Baha'is and the unity of the good people, you know, stopping the misunderstanding, to preventing that. And the matter of the universal loss of guardianship is another one that has come down here, you know, right to the point. So when I brought this up, that it is in the writing, it's not my uh, making, I'm just a mailman, I delivered something that I saw in the book. For some reason, I found it, you know. And I told them they didn't accept it. The Baha'is didn't accept it. I was always suffering in my life that, God, why are some of these Baha'is are so naive? They're so oblivious. And I always was angry to be the part of these groups like this. As soon as I found out there's a universal loss of guardianship, I brought it up. The public, they said to me that, no, Mr. Temori, you are out the door. They cast me right out. They told me that, phew, I'm not. At, as, at this point, uh, I should not, you know, attack universal loss of justice because they have not said anything about me, whether I am or I'm not, or my claim is this or not. All I'm hearing is hearsay. But certainly some uh, Baha'is that I know have they're dealt with, they have totally denounced whatever I'm saying. It's because God is not going to give the affair of the planet Earth to some sign-up people on a paper that they call themselves Baha'is, distinguishing themselves from others that are not Baha'i, forgetting that Baha'u'llah complains a million times. The distinguishing figure of his, uh, feature of his Revelation is that this prophet of God, this manifestation of God, Baha'u'llah complains from his own believer more than anything else. He simply says, I have no enemy. Never mind my enemy. Never mind those who put me in jail. Never mind those who did that, that to me. It's okay. I am of those they made me to cry, he says. They attach themselves to me, but they're doing things that I cry, he says in the Tablet of Splendors, he says, in the Seven Valleys, he says, and he mentions what they do. So, do not be baffled by somebody who says, I'm a Baha'i. Baha'u'llah says the Baha'is are known by their deeds, not by what they say. That's a claim. Sure, you enter the University of Baha'u'llah and, uh, you know, a spaceship, but that doesn't mean you are anything better than other people. Not a no chance. Do not bring those names here. You have to bring attributes and characters and so on and whatnot. And if you have all the great characters, but you're not Baha'i, then people cannot use you. Because all the enemies are seems in the planet against the humanity are united. But what about the friends? What about those good Japanese, good, those good Chinese and the blacks and this and that? They're all scattered around. Baha'u'llah's made a house of gravity, so all those good people, they come together. Uh, to do something for the planet, for the people, for mankind. Uh, so, uh, my whole, uh, uh, this topic was just, if you saw in the writing of Baha'u'llah or Bob or Abdul Baha especially, Shobi Effendi, something that uh, does not seem to you right, remember, immediately categorize it. That Baha'u'llah is a mineral body. His body may not be as good as others. Somebody can wrestle his hand and put his hand down. That doesn't mean because of that he's not a prophet. His body may not be as strong as other people. The vegetable program is not as strong. But that is not why he's a prophet. His hearing, his sight, his animal features may not be good as other people, never mind people may not be good as other animals. And his human faculties of knowledge, of arts, of this and that, science, I'm sorry, he's not in that either. God is not investing in a scientist 
to martyr him, to kill him before you know announcing. Those we had no problem with getting it. It is exclusively on something that we cannot do, we have not been able to do it yet, therefore he is coming for that. So anything that is out of order, sometimes, if you see it in the writing of Baha'u'llah or Abdul Baha, that's fine. It is not, uh, the, that does not make him uh, an ordinary person, no. Remember always the, uh, the example of Tarzan, human and animal. Many animals are better than us, but because of our thinking, we're higher overall, we're higher than animals. Same way, the prophets of God, because of this Holy Spirit in them, uh, they're prophesized, you know, there's no evolution of their thoughts, the extreme kindness they have, and the pain that they go through in the environment to insist on what they're saying, and never they waver, never hate anyone, and all of that absolutely for free. No one has produced anything like this to us. Therefore, because of that, they're prophet, because nobody else can do and has done that, except them who claim this. And uh, I would essentially think that's enough uh, for this particular topic that shows the limitations and the main differences and distinguishing features between the prophets and the humanity and the human being. Finally, I should say that when we talk about the prophet of God, you know, we're not trying to create a being superior to us and we become subservient. Not at all. Baha'u'llah says, I find myself utter nothing. Nothing, he says. When I'm comparing myself with one of you guys. He is not saying this to create an allegory. He is telling absolutely the truth. My example was, that I don't know if I spoke about it, I always say that Philippus, the father of Alexander, he loved his son Alexander so much that he hired the greatest teacher of all the time, Aristotle. The famous Aristotle became the personal teacher of Alexander. Look at this. Could you say Aristotle is better, more important in the eye of Philippus or Alexander? You tell me. If you love your son that much that you hire the best teacher for him, do you love the teacher more or your son? Topic for the debates. That is what the situation is. Baha'u'llah is brought to us for free, free of charge. They must be pretty important. Immensely important that I personally, I would not prefer to be called anything but just a human being. I hope to attain to the maximum capacity that I'm programmed to be, to use all the part of my windows that God has given me, that this nature has offered me, to be that. I'm an elder because of my office, personal I think is a punishment that me, because I have a big mouth, Baha'u'llah says, okay boy, you're going to have to do this in order to pass. Others do not have to go through this. But you do, you have to. And if you fail, too bad for you. So this is the reason I'm trying to speak to you and trying to bring the mission and I'm making these videos not edited not like Hollywood, just made, making it very raw as it is. Let it be a sign of the raw, just like in the nature. You find out what part is good to you and what part needs to be improved and uh, go on with it. Thank you very much. We'll see you hopefully tomorrow night again. May God be with you all.